Would you be able to know if your dog or cat is in shock? In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm gonna show you exactly how to tell. The shock is defined as a drop in circulating blood flow to the vital organs. Something underlying has happened, you know, typically we're thinking of something like trauma, a car accident, there's been some internal bleeding, a drop in blood pressure, a drop in blood flow to these vital organs. It can also be something metabolic, you know, something such as a, a diabetic low blood sugar or hypoglycemia, uh, maybe with an Addisonian crisis. The point here though, this is a significant emergency. You need to be able to recognize it immediately if it's happening with your dog and take, take immediate action. So for example, with Pippi here, there's a few different things I'd expect to see in Jacques. To begin with, she'd be acting weak, lethargic, probably non-responsive. I'm like, there's something not going on, not going right here. And the next more common sign you're gonna see is changes in your dog's gum or your cat's gum color. So most dogs who are not in shock are going to have a nice, healthy pink gums. Pippi's here, they're a nice, healthy pink. But if your dog is in shock, I'd expect to see those gums very pale, maybe even whitish. The next thing you're going to check is a thing called CRT or capillary refill time. And once again, this is a measure of the blood pressure. So to do that, we're gonna lift up your dog's lips again. We're gonna look at their gums. And you're gonna put your finger on top of the gums and see how quickly it takes for that pink color to return to normal. Generally, you expect it to be less than one to two seconds, one, 1,000. It's less than a second, meaning Pippi has more than adequate good blood pressure. When a dog is in shock, they don't have that. They've got a really decreased blood pressure and that's gonna be upwards of less than four seconds. And if that's the case, I mean, that's the real big indicator. Your dog is in immediate shock. They're gonna need immediate veterinary care. There are other things that you might see. Um, typically these dogs and their cats in shock, um, they're gonna have a much ha higher respiratory rate so they're breathing a lot faster. the extremities can feel cold to the touch because what's happening is the body is diverting blood flow away from all the extremities, trying to focus on just the essential organs. If you guys are also able to check your dog's blood pressure, that would be ideal. Um, typically too, in shock, we're gonna, we're gonna see a dramatic lower, dramatically lowered blood pressure. Um, the easiest one to palpate is called the femoral artery. Um, so that's inside this big bone here. Here's this is Pippi's femur. So the inside of the femur, you just run your whole four, in, in, four middle thing, four fingers along the inside. See if you can actually feel a pulse now. You're gonna put your thumb on the outside, all the fingers on the inside and put moderate pressure. If you're feeling a pulse there, that's called the femoral artery. Once again, you can just feel what it is like to be normal. In a dog that's in shock, it's really difficult to feel that femoral pulse. It's gonna be very weak and very thready. As well too, their, your dog or your cat is going to have a much elevated heart rate. So you can just put your hand on the inside, especially the left side, feeling where the heart is. Easiest is on the left inside of the left armpit. Just stick your ear there and just feel the pulse. If it's really rapid, once again, that's more likely a sign that your dog or your cat is in trouble. So say you've done all that and you're sort of wondering, you know, what can I do? First thing, you recognize it and ideally you're getting your dog or your cat to the veterinary clinic as soon as possible. In general, shock is something that needs to be treated by an emergency veterinarian. Typically it means getting your dog on IV fluids, elevating that blood pressure so that we can return uh, normal blood flow to the critical organs. But in the interim, there's three things you can consider doing. First of all, you wanna keep your dog warm, your cat warm. If, you have, if it just means wrapping them up in a blanket, so be it. Um, if you have something, you know, like a hot water bottle that you can fill up and then put into their groin, once again, that's going to elevate their body temperature. Oh, baby. Good girl. Yeah, there. 
A second, if your dog is still alert enough to swallow, um, it would be fine to force some fluids. If you have a syringe or something, to get some fluids into their mouth so they can get in additional volume. What we're trying to do typically is increase blood volume. And by doing that, we're doing it with IV fluids. But if all you have is, you know, fluids and water in a syringe, so be it, just go ahead and use it. As long as you're not forcing into your dog and they can swallow. And the third thing, we'll be giving Pippi something that she likes, food. But in particular, it's this, it's honey. We're giving your dog, your cat, something sweet. It's not uncommon to have a low blood sugar associated with shock or even primarily being a primary cause of shock. So if you have some like easily absorbed sweetener that can be put on your dog's gums, your cat's gums, feel free to use that as well. So with the dog like Pippi, I'd be giving her, you know, one tablespoon, just um, rubbing it on her gums. A you know, smaller dog, one teaspoon. Be the food-driven hound. Wow. Finally, the video session has ended with something good. There, Pippi. Good. It's not all bad. Oh, good. There. Good. Thanks so much, you guys, for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe to my channel. Click down there to like this video, and then when you click the link further in the box below, I can send you my free books, my free videos, and how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.